ML Nation, this is Simon Chan. I'm fired up to bring our special guest today. We have Blair Critch. Hey, Blair, are you ready to make it happen? I am so ready to make it happen. Blair Critch was a kindergarten teacher who didn't want to go back to teaching after having her two boys. And around the same time, financial strategy financial tragedy struck her family and she had to file for bankruptcy and all these other bad things along with it. Uh, and then Blair was looking for different ventures before she got introduced to network marketing. She's gone through numerous challenges which you should talk about on the show and learn many lessons along the way. But today she's a multiple six-figure earner, has earned over a million dollars in just the last two and a half years. So Blair, welcome to the show. I've given ML Nation a brief background, but take us back to uh, when you were a teacher and um, what happened? I mean, in your bio, when you said to me, you had homes, you lost everything. What happened? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I did love teaching, but I always kind of knew that I wanted to share something and, and use the techniques and strategies and tools that I was learning in a much bigger way. I dabbled in network marketing back then. Um, there were a couple of companies that people would say, oh, Blair, you love people. You love talking to everybody. You should try it. And Spent a lot of money and never made a dime. And looking back, that was my fault, not the company's fault. I just didn't know what I was doing. Uh, but uh, right after I had my first son, I stayed home for five years. We thought it'd be great if we started to invest in flipping some houses. Then we started um, actually renting out the houses. Well, South Florida, the market crashed and nobody could pay their mortgage. And all of a sudden we had 10 properties with insurance flying high. My husband's business was wrapped up in mortgage and we had to file bankruptcy. So I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are like, oh, yep, I remember that too. It was around 2008 and it was rough. I had two young children under the age of three and we had no money. Absolutely no money. Both of our businesses were gone and we had to completely start over. And so during that time, it was the spring. I couldn't go back to teaching till the fall. And somebody introduced me to like this jewelry company. And I thought, well, maybe I'll make a little bit of money between now and going back to teaching in the fall. And that would at least help pay for groceries because that's where we were at. My mom paid for my kit. I got started. And very quickly within the first two months, I made more money than I ever did teaching just by sharing like some fun parties at night with women. That's when I first realized that network marketing direct sales could change my life and really could take us out of a really pit of despair and help us. And so my husband, being the entrepreneur that he is, was like, let's give this a year and try it. You should go all in. Don't go back to teaching. You know, I was really dragging my heels about going back to teaching because I didn't want to put my kids in morning care. I didn't want to put my kids in aftercare. I wanted to be with them. And I wasn't sure how I was going to make that happen. And this provided that opportunity. So I was with that company for almost five years and now with my current company um, for five years as well. So I've been in network marketing direct sales for 10 years and it completely saved my life so when you got started with that uh, jewelry company you did pretty well you said you made more in two months than you did as a full year as a kindergarten teacher yes. um why did you think oh, that was a full year i made more in the month than i would have ever made in a month teaching got it got it. okay yes. made more in the month that's still pretty good right yes. it's like more by the end of that year i made double what i would have made in teaching and by the second year i made triple so it's really amazing what can happen unfortunately teachers don't get paid enough <laughs> <laughs> so why did uh and for those who you listening were not in the u.s i think it's pretty common uh, what's the average kindergarten teacher make Thirty thousand. Twenty six thousand. Twenty six thousand. okay so 26 so why did you think you had success right away uh, well, a lot of distributors are struggling. Why did you think yeah. you had success right away? So I think with the jewelry company, the reason I had success right away, because I really was having fun with it and I believed in it. And I think that's the biggest thing. I would, you know, I really loved the jewelry. I loved the mission of the company, which was to empower and help women. And so when I would show up at these women's home, I would make them feel comfortable. I would make them feel beautiful. And then I would really add value to them. Like, hey, I want to make your life easier. What if, uh, yeah, you want to buy that necklace, but what if I could show you three or four other things that you could save up for a holiday gift? Or why don't we have a party together so you can get stuff for free and, you know, be able to invite 10 girls over, drink wine and get free jewelry. So I think I really understood the concept of having fun and showing value because that's just really what I wanted to do. I came from a place of truly believing in the product and in the company. When you emailed me, you said one of the th one of the superpowers you have was getting buy-in from family. Um, um, 
why but a lot of network marketers, a lot of people are listening to this, a lot of times they're most negative you know, prospects of family. So can you talk about what, some tips if they have negative family or how do you, how do you approach your family to begin with? Yeah, absolutely. So I will tell you this. I did not have as great a buy-in with my first business, with the jewelry business as I did with my second. I learned my lesson. So when I decided to switch companies, I did have like minimal support, right? Like some of you guys might relate to this. I, my husband would come home from work at night. I'd go, okay, see you. I have to go to the jewelry party. You've got to watch the kids. So yeah, he watched my kids. They were safe. But was anything done around the house? Did he help out with anything else? No. So it made a lot of extra work on me. And he would call it my fun little jewelry business. Well, that fun little jewelry business was making us $98,000 a year. But I didn't have his support. I didn't have his help. And everybody else in our family and our network of friends looked at it as like my fun little business right? But it was actually a real business. So I learned from that mistake. And when I started with the company that I'm with now, I got buy-in. And what I mean by that is you have to know first what you want out of the business. So why are you with the company you're with? And what do you want to achieve? And how would that change your family? Right? So you've got to, you've got to know that first. Once you know that you feel that in your heart, then you've got to sit down your partner and you have to say to them, and if you're not married or you don't have a significant other, then maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's your friends because things are going to have to change for the first few months while you're beginning a business. And so I sat that my husband down and said, this is what I want out of this company. This is why I believe in it. And this is what it could do for our family. What do you think? And here's my plan. So first thing, know your compensation plan, right? Understand how you're going to make money so you can explain it to your partner. So I said, here's how I make the money. Here's how I could get to the top of that compensation plan in the first six months. And But here's what it's going to require of me. And are we okay for me to do this, right? Because it's going to take time. It's going to take energy. You can't expect to work a business just in the nooks and crannies. Like I hear people say that all the time with network marketing. Like you can just fit into the nooks and crannies. Yes, you can. And you can earn extra $500 or $1,000 a month. But I needed five to $10,000 a month or five to $10,000 a week. Like I saw people doing this and I thought if they can do it, why can't I do it? And so I had to put in full-time time you know, and when I was transitioning from the jewelry business into this one, I had to also be doing two things at the same time. So I had to be very strict with my time. So the buy-in was, here's what I need your help with, an honesty talk, right? Once they say, yeah, I want that too. Like, I want to pay off our debt. I want to go on that trip. I want to save up for our kids' tuition. Okay, great. Well, here's what I'm going to need you to do. And I think that's a missing step that a lot of women and men miss. It's, hey, but here's what I'm going to need your help with then right? Include them in it. Maybe it's them helping reach out to their network as well. Maybe it's them doing extra things around the home. Maybe it's them just supporting you at night when you have to go make calls or be on the computer. Um, but also asking them, hey, let's find a night a week that's just for the two of us, right? Mm -hmm. So not losing your relationship either in the moment is really important. Well, you were very clear that like this is, you didn't treat it like a hobby. You, you basically treat the business like a job. Like if you got a second job, hey, I'm going to be away and I need your help, and these are the things, and I think I agree with you, you know, you said most people leave out that first, last step, it's like, this is what I need you to do, so mm -hmm. I can do this, yeah. right? and they don't have that conversation, and then you have to do, you, you, you end up doing everything, and you go crazy. Yes, and that was me in my first business, and I used to get so mad, because I literally had three years in a row of hitting $98,000 in commission, I was like, why can't I get to that six-figure mark, like, the, I want to say that I got there to show other people they can do it too, and looking back, I think that was my biggest mistake, that and not planning things on the calendar, like, you've got to decide, like, when am I working this business, when's my follow-up, when's my reach out, where is that going to be, and I didn't treat it like a business, because other people weren't treating it like a business, so first you have to know it's your business, and then you have to treat it that way, so, and find a space, right? Like, even if it is a corner in a bedroom, but you have to have a space where you can shut the door and work your business. Let's talk about, uh, we're going to get back to the calendar in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk about what was a aha moment for you? Maybe what was this or even when you uh, came with your current company? Uh, what was the point where things really, really took off for you? Um, I, it was definitely more in the business that I'm in now. And the biggest aha moment for me was to recognize that I needed to... I mean, it has a lot to do with the calendar, but my biggest aha moment was realizing that I had to have stuff on my calendar, right? So I had to treat my business like a business. I had to decide when I was doing my reach outs, my follow ups, my social media. Um, but the second thing was Miracle Morning was a huge aha moment for me. Somebody um, actually told my husband to read Miracle Morning for real estate. 
And he told me I should read it. I didn't even know there was one for network marketers yet. So shout out to that book because it was life changing for me. Because once I realized I, if I owned my morning, I would own my day and I needed to organize myself. And that really did change a lot for me and for my whole family. So let's uh, talk about calendar and planning. When do you, when does this happen? What's your routine like? Like I have a specific routine. Like when I think about anything I have to do, I immediately put it in the calendar. Uh, what do you do? When do you plan your day and uh, how does that work? So every Sunday evening, I plan out my week. And then we actually have, this is, some of you guys might laugh out there, but my husband and I have a meeting and that has been the best thing for our marriage. So those of you that are in a relationship, write that one down because after I do my calendar, we meet together on Sunday night and it's, Hey, what do you have? What do I have? What do the children have? And then, okay, now I know exactly where I can fit in anything else that I need to do. Right. So I have the things that are non-negotiable already on the calendar, and then I can fit in any of the other things that I need to do. Then every single day I look at my, actually look at my calendar before I go to bed at night. And if something got missed or I didn't, I wasn't able to do something the way I thought I was, then it needs to move over to the next day. I review my calendar next morning. I wake up, it's ready for me to go again. So I really live by my calendar. And for some people that might sound stressful, but the reality was when I allow myself to have free time, guess what I do? I just scroll, 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 scroll. And then I get lost in social media world and I haven't really done anything productive or I'm like off at Target or I'm running errands and I'm not spending the time. And that's another time sucker, right? If you work from home, it's a blessing, but it's also a curse because you're off doing laundry, washing the dishes and finding everything to do but work. So everything's on the calendar for me and that allows me more time with my family because I know when I'm doing my business and when I'm with my family. Yeah, um, I always talk about this where if you live by the calendar, you think you have no freedom, but it actually creates your rigidity and your discipline to the calendar actually creates more freedom because when you are done, you're actually free to do things. You have to worry about these things. And because you talked about like you're doing laundry and all this type of stuff, um, but you don't feel good because all the mm -hmm. lack, right? Because you deep down, you know, I should be prospecting and that actually causes more stress. So even when you're out with your kids in the back of their minds, like, oh, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Yeah. It's so stressful, right? And I know you have a program for people for reach out follow-ups, like a system. And we have that on my team too. And I tell them like, just make it non-negotiable. If you don't, if you haven't learned how to calendar plan yet, at least have a number of how many reach outs, how many follow-ups and how many times you're going to be on social media posting that day so that you at least get that done because it does, it will leave you with a pit in your stomach if you don't get what you know you need to get done. You talk about the morning routines. What's your morning routine like? Oh gosh, it's changed a little bit this last year just because of my kids' schedules. But I get up um, about an hour and 15 minutes before the rest of the family. Um, first, I take my capsules. That's something we do in, in my company. It wakes me up. And then I literally go brush my teeth so that there's no option to do anything else but get up. <laughs> <laughs> then I go and I take quiet time. I, I can only do it for about two minutes. I wish I could do it longer. It's been five years since I read Miracle Morning. I still only do five minutes. Um, but five minutes of quiet time. And then I do some personal reading. For me, it's usually um, the Bible or devotion. Then I do um, some affirmations. And I try to change my affirmations quarterly based on my goals. And then I do some visualization. I always have my vision board in my office right across from my desk so I can look right up at it. If I'm traveling, I have those same pictures in my phone so I can constantly do visualization. And then the last few minutes, I try to either find something on YouTube or read or a book that I'm reading, just something that's going to push me in the right direction for that day. And, and I usually always look at like what area I'm lacking in, because no matter how long you've been in network marketing and direct sales, you're going to be really great at sales for a few months and not so great at recruiting. And then really great at recruiting, not so great at sales, right? Things and not so great as a leader. All of a sudden, I'll find myself becoming a dictator, telling everybody what to do instead of asking questions. So for me, I, I kind of figure out, I learned this from Darren Hardy. He said, take 90 days and think about the one thing you want to get better at and find the best speakers on that, find the best people on YouTube, find the best books, the best podcasts, and just only focus on that for 90 days. So whatever is going on that in days, that's what I'm listening to or reading just for about 10 minutes before I go enter the world of being a mom, which puts me into a completely different space. Then I drop my kids off, come home, check messages for the morning, Facebook, Instagram, and email. And then I go work out, come back, and I start my reach outs, my follow-ups, follow and my non-negotiables, I call them. 
Good stuff there. How important is consistency to success? Yeah, consistency is key. I mean, it really is because what will happen is you'll go and and I have done this so many times, right? I get really, really good and I'm sticking to the plan and then I might go on vacation for a week and then I come home and I don't get back on that plan and you'll see your business go like this. But the reality is if you stay consistent, I might not see something today, tomorrow or next week, but I will see something in a month and I'll definitely see even more growth in 60 days and in 90 days. So consistency is so important. I feel like that's the number one thing I see is people will give up before they see the results because they thought they were consistent, but two days doesn't equal consistency, right? It's got to be like a whole quarter. You got to stick to your plan. Yeah, when you're sowing the seeds, the seeds don't grow in two days. True, right? Yeah, so true. This is my favorite question. What is your worst moment in network marketing to the point maybe you even thought about hey i don't even want to do this anymore but you didn't quit and that's why you're the leader you are today yeah uh i think it's drama so anybody who's out there that's watching this right like i know you're probably either laughing right now or you're like yes i've been there right um but there's sometimes when you bring a bunch of personalities together some people are going to like each other and some people aren't And especially I seem to attract a lot of women because that's who I have a heart and passion for. And so drama comes sometimes. And so when there's really big drama things on my team, and I can think of two times in particular that brought me to be like, this is ridiculous. I don't even want to be a part of it. Right. But in those moments, that's not what those people need. They need somebody to step up, to love on them, to not allow the behavior and to move forward. And so those times were really hard for me. And some people didn't like me through those times. That was another hard thing for me. I like, I'm a people pleaser and I want everybody to love me all the time. But I had to learn that I didn't need to be a part of any of that. And so I had to learn the skills to get out of those kind of situations. And also, you know, realize this is a business. It's not, you know, a sorority or a fraternity. It's a business. And so I need to work it like a business. So those for me were harder than any other times. And listen, I've seen ups and downs. And we've had crazy, amazing commission months. And I've had some commission months where I was like, what happened, right? But those don't make me want to give up because I know it's consistency and it's long term. But I think it's more the drama that mm-hmm. drains me and, and hurts personally that makes you want to quit. What was the craziest drama you had to go through? Oh, really? You're going to ask me that? (laughs) All right. So we had, well, I mean, I would say honestly, just that people misinterpreted other people. And because of that, they ended up leaving the whole company. Mm. That's probably the the quick version of that, right? So, um, but there's also been, listen, here's what happens in in network marketing, direct sales. We put a lot of people together. Some cheating happens. Um, I've had people talk behind each other's backs. I've had people steal other promoters from other people. I mean, all those things happen. When you've been in this kind of a business for 10 years, you've seen it all. Hmm. Right? And, and the reality is, is the growth is what people get really successful really fast, but they don't continue to grow their mind and their mindset. And that's when those kind of silly things happen. Yes, that's a good point. Because you always your business always goes back down to your level of leadership. So your growth, right? You may, some people can, like you said, go through really quick growth income wise, but the mindset is still at a lower level and it Mm -hmm. always drops back down. It's like the equalizer. It brings it back down. And just for our listeners know, you think, well, people steal, people poach, people quit. I mean, that's nothing against network marketing. That happens in every, um, you know, may I believe, you know, mankind is sinful and we all do. It doesn't matter if it's real estate or teaching or charity nonprofits, the church that, that happens everywhere you know, it happened in teaching <laughs> you'd be surprised the things i heard my first year of teaching as a 21 year old i was like what i went into this profession because i thought everybody would be perfect and happy and nice and want to help the world right so yeah it happens everywhere yeah you've been awesome thank you so much as we go towards the end of the show some quick questions uh to pick your brain and uh, the first one is what is one of your favorite success quotes that motivates you? So I, I actually, I have these always written on my desk. I have a few of them, but I'll share it with you. My top two. How about that? Yep. So my first one is a goal that is not in writing is just a fantasy by Darren Hardy. I know there's lots of versions of that quote. That one, for some reason, just really sticks to me, right? Because as a girl, you grew up with fantasies. Like, I want to have that nice car, that nice house. But really, 
girl, go for the goal. You'll get that fantasy, right? You got to set that goal. So that one's huge for me. And then I love Zig Ziglar. He's always full of amazing quotes, but you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Yes. That one's huge, right? Because we always like paralyze ourselves. We don't want to take that risk or that jump or, or believe in ourselves enough to get started. So all you have to do is just start and take action. What is the, uh, what's one habit that's helped you become successful? I think um, constantly reading and growing. You know, that that was a huge one for me too in network marketing when I first started was I hadn't honestly picked up a book since college. Hmm. I, unless it was a fiction book, right? I, I love to read. So I did read fiction, but I hadn't read something that would help me grow or learn since college. And all of a sudden I got into network marketing, direct sales, and there's so much amazing mindset and growth vision in, in these companies. And I realized, oh, I need to grow. I need to learn. I'm going to start, you know, reading more. And boy, that has completely changed my life in every single area. What's the best piece of advice you ever received? Um, your calendar should be your game board for your life. That's what our CEO says all the time. And I learned that the first week I was in the company I'm in now. And I really believe that's why I learned how to plan my calendar. And he said, if your calendar is your game board for your life, you should be able to glance at it and see the things that are most important to you. So if your if your kids are important to you, where is that scheduled? If your husband's important to you, where is that scheduled? If this business is important to you, where is that scheduled? So that was huge for me. What is your favorite prospecting tool? So say someone is a qualified prospect, they're interested. What do you do? Do you send them a video? Do you add them to a Facebook group, tag them in the video? Or are you web Zoom? Or do you home yeah. meetings? What do you like? So I actually prefer, our company has a Facebook fan page that has like over 2 million people on it. And they post new stories every single day. We have a customer group, but my favorite is putting them onto that because daily there's like six or seven new stories and they're brand new. They're not from five years ago. And that's what I like because I think people need to see that this company is still working for this person today, you know, not just that person five years ago. And so I can share the story of five years ago. I've been on it for five years, but I can't share the story of today. So I love doing that. I'll tag them and underneath one of those stories. And then I immediately get them on a three-way message or a three-way way call with one of my leaders and I think that's more powerful than anything else yes we do home meetings yes we do zooms we do all those things but to me it's that quick validation of what could possibly be for them they they know me they heard my story but now they're hearing somebody else and now they think hmm, maybe it would work hmm. do you have a favorite app on your phone or favorite online resource like a Dropbox Evernote that you could recommend hmm that is such a great question Hmm. I, honestly, it's funny, but I don't use really any of those. I use Audible. That's my favorite app of all time. <laughs> Audible is my favorite because that means that my you know car can be a library. And like I said, I try to read at least one book a month. And the only way I can fit that in is when I'm rushing to pick up kids or I'm going to the gym or things like that. So for me, Audible, I use it way more than probably anything else. I almost use my phone like a computer. So I use those other things. Um, but not necessarily as often as I do my Audible. What are you listening now on Audible? Um, I am re-listening to Success Principles by Jack Canfield, which is like my all-time favorite book. Yeah, it's awesome, and the book. Such a good book. Yep, and I'm, and I'm actually listening. I'm also reading Beyond Mars and Venus by Dr. Gray. So it's really about like relationships and marriage, but it helps you if you're a leader to understand relationships, I feel like. And so that's why I'm reading that one right now too. What's one or two other books you could recommend to ML Nation? Well, and I'm sure you guys have heard this one before, but I'm still a fan of GoPro by Eric Worre. I feel like it's the simplest and easiest way to break down how to get started in network marketing. So that one's huge for me. Compound Effects by Darren Hardy. That was yeah. life-changing for us. And Miracle Morning. Since you do a health uh, wellness product, if some, uh, what advice can you give to someone who wants to get a customer today? What should they do? Share what the product can do for others. Make it about them. What are their you know, pain points? What are the struggles and things that they're going through that they want to see changed? Ask them questions and then show them a story or connect them with somebody that has the same experience. So they know it's possible that they can see a change in their life. Because it took me five months to finally try the product that I'm on now because I didn't think there was any way that a vitamin supplement could possibly help me get rid of headaches, neck discomfort, digestive problems, acne. Like 
I just thought, oh, those things help with weight loss, right? Or giving people energy. I didn't know it helped with so many other things. So you've got to know what they're struggling with and make it about them, not about you. Hmm. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, here's the last question. The million okay. dollar question. You I ready? Like a drum roll. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so imagine you had to start all over again and you knew no one. So didn't even know your husband, didn't know your kids. You're like an alien that went to another planet. But you had all your current knowledge, skills, and wisdom. What's the first thing you do or the first place you go to build a network marketing business from scratch? Hmm. The first thing. So I, do I have in my social media anymore? Or You're on social problem? media, but you're starting from scratch. You have no yeah. zero friends. Social media. Zero friends. Okay. So I would honestly, I would do a live videos on why I love the product. And I would get out there and meet people. I still think there's power in face-to-face. You know, everywhere I go, people see why I'm so happy. They'll ask me questions about why I'm smiling or why I'm looking at them in the eye and talking to them. And that's when I share with them. And I get more powerful conversations one-on-one than anywhere else because they can truly see the joy that's resonating from you, either because of your business or your product. So I would just get out there and meet people, to be honest. So if you had to go out right now, what's the first place you go to meet people? Ooh, the place I'd go to, probably Publix. Oh, do you guys have Publix? It's like a grocery store. There's always there's people at the grocery store. There we go. Just Most people would probably say the gym, but I feel like it's weird when people talk to me at the gym. I'm trying to get my workout on. But at the grocery store, I'll talk to anybody. That's because you're a go-getter. You're focused. You're on the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> right. I have a mission when I'm there. You got to get a lot of stuff done before the kids get back. <laughs> so true. That's hey, awesome. Hey, you've been awesome. Um, any last, as we, as we wrap up, any last words or advice? And then what's the best way our listeners can connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. So here's my best advice. Don't give up. You know, everyone will have a reason why they think you can't be successful, but you know you can be. So if you're with a product that you love and a business that you believe in, you can be successful. Do not give up. So, um, and then I would love for you guys to find me on Instagram. I'm Blair Critch 2. And on Facebook, uh, you could go to facebook.com slash sparklyblair. I still have that from back in the jewelry day. <laughs> and you can also find me on BlairCritch.com. I haven't put up a lot of blogs lately, but you can still find me there and reach out to me. Hey, ML Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And today, you may hang out with Blair Critch. So keep up the momentum and go to MLNation.com. Go to the podcast tab and the show notes of all the nuggets of wisdom. The books that Blair recommended will be right there. And reach out to her. The links to her Facebook and Instagram will be there as well. Hey, in order to be successful in life and business and in network marketing, you must help others. So Blair, thanks again for sharing your valuable time with ML Nation. We're grateful to you and we appreciate you for having a positive impact on millions of distributors worldwide. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you. Bye, guys.